I say, it doesn't matter how much power you make, you're not going anywhere if you can't get it to the ground, and especially repeatedly. And on the uh, 69 Camaro that we just finished up in our shop called Lou's Change, the car's making almost 700 horsepower, and we're entrusting all that to a Curry Race 9 rear end assembly. We're here with John Curry. What's the latest from you guys in the street performance market? The latest and popular thing that we're doing is our F9 housing. It's a fabricated housing. Um, you can see here, here's one on this rear end here. This is actually a Raptor rear end. But we do the same style deal for street cars, Mustangs, the Camaros. That's real, a real popular item right now. So tell me some of the details about that fabricated housing. It's actually a fabricated welded housing. We offer them in mild steel, uh, 856, or in chromoly. So it depends on how serious of a racer you are, whether you need chromoly or not. We offer it both ways. Multiple different housing ends, multiple axles. I'm sure in your car we put a 35 spline yep. axle. There's a lot more 35 spline differentials available today. If you went back five years, you'd probably build that car with a 31 spline differential. But the amount of horsepower that you can put to ground today is a lot greater than we had just a few years ago. So now, you know, everybody that is in the know and is building a car like that, they're gonna step up and put a 35 spine axle. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of different 35 spine axles available for the street market. And I think we ran a race nine, which is a little bit different from the nine plus. The, you were probably one that the, the, uh, the race case yes. is what you're talking about. That's a, a nodular iron, uh, a heavy duty third member case. Mm -hmm. So instead of using like a, like a gray iron, uh, mm -hmm. this uses a ductile iron, a little more material in it to beef it up in the weak points. So around the, the third uh, pinion bearing or the pocket bearing has more material around it. A little bit heavier, but under you know those shock loads that you get in a high performance street car or drag car, it holds up under that a lot better. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's actually, you know, within reason, almost a little more flexible than rigid. Is that correct? Well, that's the thing. There's a fine line between, you know, being, you know, flexible and tough and then being brittle. Yeah. So that's where you come into the, you know, the, the nodular iron or, or a high grade of ductile iron, and that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's got a little bit of flexibility, so it actually flex and come back without cracking. You know, things flex. So right. under power, there's a lot of things that move around. And you know, if you had like an aluminum case in your car, that case may be good for three to 400 horsepower. You start putting five to 600 horsepower under an aluminum case, what happens, the pattern changes under a lot of load. So under a couple hard launches, you'll find that the gear might be making noise. Normally with an Audron case, you don't get any of that flex, you know. If something's gonna flex, it'll usually end up breaking or something in that yeah, case. Yeah, well, so. the tire lets go or right, something yeah. there. So. Uh, I know you guys have a, a pretty strong crate rear end program for the muscle cars and the late model performance cars. Can you tell us what that's all about? The, well, the crate rear end program, let's say you have a, a popular, let's say, 57 or 55 to 57 Chevs. That's a popular crate rear end that we do. Uh, uh, the, all the Camaro, Camaros, we have a crate rear ends for all the Camaros. And, um, you know, the, the Mustangs from the early Mustangs to the late model Mustangs, including the 05 to uh, 14 Mustangs, mm -hmm. we have a crate rear end for those. And tell us, what is a crate rear end? Is it something uh, to make it a little bit easier to buy one? or? Well, the, the crate rear end program, yeah, it's, it's something that we actually have pre-built that's in stock, so you could get it qu quicker. You could come to Curry and, off, and we could build you a crate rear end within probably a couple days, put it together and ship it to you. Mm -hmm. But you could also get that same rear end modified. Let's say, hey, I got an 05 Mustang and I'm gonna put some really big tires on that. I wanna narrow this rear end an inch on in each side. That kind of steps out of the crate rear end program, but that's something that Curry can offer you as well. So there, there's actually both. The crate rear end is a certain size that pretty much made to bolt in and replace the stock rear end with a nine inch forward. Mm -hmm. And then you have the custom side of it, which is basically you could have it built any way you want. But there's still options within the crate to decide what kind of differential, what kind of gear, that right. kind of stuff. Yeah, the crate we're in basically consists of the housing, the axles, and the brakes. So, so those options, you could get you know a certain housing, a certain set of axles, and a certain set of brakes. Then, you, then your differential is could be wide open. It could be anywhere. You could set it up with Bonneville go, uh, gears to go out and run it at the lakes or you could set it to run at the eighth mile at the local track. Mm -hmm. So depending on what third member. Or you can have one of each. You can have your, your street gear that you run, you know, you know, Friday night, you know, around town. And then, you know, Saturday you throw your, your, your gear in there and you go out to the drag strip on, on Saturday afternoon. So. Now, are we seeing a difference in the, um, 
the makeup of a rear axle assembly designed for drag racing versus what's real popular today is autocross and a lot of road racing uh, for a muscle car. There's some different things that you know those guys are looking for. A lot of it has to do with suspension setup. Mm -hmm. You know, you know the, the autocross is getting very, very popular. An autocross car is, you know, they're looking for a car that does a combination of things really good. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they're not going to run a spool or a Detroit locker in their autocross car. They're probably going to run some kind of spiral bevel gear differential or some kind of a positive traction. So that's where you're going to come. You know, that's going to be the big differences. Um, and then also maybe the you know in a drag car you're going to run some kind of a four link or you know something like that. The autocross car is going to save with something maybe more like a Watts linkage and you know you know something maybe a triangle or a four link or in a panard. So that's where you come in. And everybody's trying to get their car to do you know in an autocross situation trying to get the, you know everything out of that car. They want to be fast in the drag strip. They want it to go around corners. They want it to break well. And drag racing, it's not as critical. It's all about just getting off the line, getting in the strip, and getting the car slowed down. You know, and then you know, weight comes into maybe a factor there too. The drag car is going to have like a lighter brake on it than maybe the autocross guy. The autocross guy is going to, you know, he may be running you know, 18 or 20 inch wheels, and he's going to run a 14 inch rotor. And we do that stuff at Curry. And maybe that's kind of also where the Fab Nine housing comes into play. Right. You, Fab Nine is going to get a more rigid housing. You know, you know, if it comes to putting custom suspensions on it or whatever, it might be a little more acceptable to the stuff that you want to uh, weld on there or whatever. Well, very cool. One last little tech question. Uh, what is it that makes gears whine? What? Well, it could be a lot of things that make gears whine. Normally, it's the setup. Mm -hmm. 9S4s are really, you know, sensitive to that because if you get the setup just a little bit off, they're going to make noise. So, you know. At Curry, we actually have a, a rear end dyno. We can actually check the gear if there's a question with that gear when they're setting up, something doesn't look exactly right. We actually set it up, we run it up to, I think it's uh, 2200 RPM. We put a little decimal meter on it and listen to it really? if there's a question. If we send one to a customer and he says, hey, you know, this gear, this gear is making noise, when they send it back, you know, we do a physical inspection, then it goes in the dyno. And then we listen to it in the dyno. If it's obvious, hey, this thing's making more noise than it should, you know, that's an easy fix. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, you may put it in there, we can't find the, what the noise is. So then, we'll, you know, at, at that point, we'll usually tell the customer, hey, you know, we checked this gear out, we can't figure out why it's making noise, but this is what we'll do. We'll put all new gear in it, new bearings in it, and send it back to you. But if it makes that same noise again, you may want to look further up your drive line or something like that, because there could be something else to make a noise. But, Normally what's making noise is just, you know, how the gear is set up. Mm -hmm. And then also the quality of the gear. You could have a good gear that's set up right, has a perfect pattern, but if the finish on the face of the gear is not good, if it wasn't lapped in long enough, that gear can still make noise even though it has a perfect setup. So the break-in is crucial? Yeah, well, if the gear's bad, it's going to be gonna bad be from the, the get-go. We tell people normally one heat cycle on the break-in, like, take your vehicle out, drive it, get it up to operating temperature, and then let it cool off. That's usually enough for a break-in, mm -hmm. you know? You know, if a guy calls us, hey, you know, this gear's making a little bit of noise, we'll tell him, hey, you know, put a few miles on it and see what happens. If it gets worse, you know, hey, you know, if it gets better, you know, but you don't want to, you know, go out and drive around the block and say, hey, it's making noise. You know, at least get, a, you know, maybe a couple heat cycles on it and see what happens. Or, and then in our case, we want to get enough on there that we can actually look at the pattern and if, if, if we It'll can see, see something it. wrong, yeah, so. And what do you guys recommend for fluid? We use an 85-140 GL5, and then depending on what additives you need, if you have a traction lock, you got to use the Ford additive, or if it has other differentials, maybe want to use those additives. The spiral bevel uh, gear differentials need no additives, so uh, we have 9 plus gear oil. Mm -hmm. It's a high grade 85-140. We run that everything from street cars to, to mild race cars. When we get in something that's going, you know, real high performance, then we'll go into a little more exotic oils than that. But that usually covers 99% of everything we're doing. Well, very cool. Great information, man. All Thank right. you for taking the time. Thank you. It's always a pleasure, John. Mm -hmm.